So welcome to another Bible study. You know how we start off as usual. Just going to ask for two volunteers, someone to just sing a prayer chorus for us, and then another person to just pray us in. So any volunteers? All right, so I, I'll pray. Oh. Okay, all right. So now I will pray. Um, sorry, Brandon, you had your hand up first. Was there a specific thing you were volunteering for? No, nah, I'll do either of them. So since no one's praying, I'll, I'll do the prayer chorus. Okay, all right. Whenever you're ready. All right. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield, to you alone does my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship Thee. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we're so grateful for who you are. We're so grateful that you blessed us and brought us to see another Friday evening or another Saturday morning. Thank you for, you know, showing up and showing out in our lives, God. We all went through different circumstances, different um, painful experiences and happy experiences. But we're so grateful that you were there with us through it all. Father God, we ask that you forgive us of any sins that um we might have at this time god and may our hearts be receptive to whatever will be taught today we ask that you will be the supreme teacher and we won't speak from our own thoughts our own opinions but we'll be led by your holy spirit as it comes into our different spaces at this time please touch and guide us again in a special way through jesus christ our lord amen Amen. Thanks, Brenda. And welcome, Monique, who just came in. All right, guys. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and you're okay? You're doing good? Yes, I'm doing okay. <laughs> why Why change a while ago? Yes, I'm doing okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, because i mean the enemy giving me a ten thousand reasons to not be but i got fifteen thousands where i should be so there's amen. that amen amen thanks for coming i'm glad to have you all right guys so thank you bring <laughs> amen wow <laughs> all right okay guys so welcome again um so i think we all know or maybe not everybody know but this week what we'll be looking on is the topic the hot topic of christian dating and relationships so um we sent a question what do i call this like a a form in the group for persons to put in questions that would, they would like to be addressed during for this topic, this specific topic. So I have some questions here and I'm just going to um, ask one question at a time, just lay it out there. And anybody who wants to spark or start the discussion or have any questions following that, then we'll just do so. Okay, so yes. All right, so we have a couple questions here, and the first one I'm going to ask or start out with is a strong one, and the question, the person asks, 
how do you date as a Christian? What exactly does that entail? All right, so question out to you guys. Any of your thoughts, any of your opinions? So, yes. How do you date as a Christian and what exactly does that entail? So the floor is open to anyone. Okay, Julie's hand is up. Go ahead, Jules. All right, um, I'll start off this conversation and say by dating with intentionality. So, you know, there's there's a lot in the sea, right? But not everything in the sea is for us. And we're not just going to take anything that comes by. So, dating with intentionality, knowing that we're dating with the purpose of marriage being the end goal knowing what we're looking for in our partner so then being god fearing of course so yeah all right love that start okay anybody else have anything to add to that what you guys think it should entail or you as a person if you are looking in the dating world as a christian what do you think is required how do you think you go about it you know so yes floor is open i have a question to add to your question <laughs> can yeah, i be but... heard yes i can hear you go ahead Hi, Gary. <laughs> um so you're asking like what what is required and so on like is it a must that you guys start out as friends or somebody can just slide in your DMs and say, okay, I want to date you? <laughs> or we have, to, we have to like start out as friends first? Hmm. Well, question out to everybody. Start out as friends. Okay, Brandon, honey's up. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know if there's necessarily an answer to that question because I've seen, you know, powerful Christian relationships start off in both ways. On one hand, it was like friends who became more than friends. And then I know of another sort of, you know, a powerful Christian couple that started off by the guy sliding into her DMs and then a relationship developing from that. And I think each of those spaces has their own unique pros and cons. Um, and of course, each is dependent on the type of people and the way they're approach relationships generally so i don't necessarily think there's a a wrong or right way but i can speak from my own experience and for me i find that the relationships that i've formed secondary to having friendships have been so much more fulfilling and the reason why i say that is when you start off as friends you get to see the good the bad and the ugly in a person there's no pretentiousness to it you're not trying to look good for somebody you're not trying to you know dot your i's and cross your t's so when you kind of start off as friends with somebody you see their rise to real sense and you can decide either to love or hate that and the relationships that are built on that premise of friendship i find are have a depth that isn't possible otherwise because you got to see this person at their rawest and realest so when you learn to love that, you've already accepted their rise and realist, you know? Love that, Brandon. Love that. Yes, I would say the same as well. But we can't really add nothing to it because you can uh, say everything. Yes, Noel, you're saying? Oh, but as Julie said, it was for <laughs> everyone is different. Personally speaking, and we tell my baby, um, for me, I don't know if it's you know a trauma or anything <laughs> but for me you know once i've been placed in the friend zone it's very hard to come out i don't know again me no because <laughs> when you say oh we are friends you know even if i had a little twitch and i like you and then you say oh we're friends now oops that's it it's over i don't know <laughs> 
better than when we scream. But I, I don't know. It's just so hard for me to, to come out of that because I see you in a different light. I know, you know, friendship is so, it's just a big thing for me. It's just as important as, you know, uh, um, our friendship or, or that dating thing. I don't know if you guys get what I mean, but you know, how I see my friends is just, I don't know how to say it, you know, it's just so important. So I feel like if I'm planning to date someone, I have to, it's not like going to be a stranger or someone I don't have intentions of being a friend with, but I still know that the end goal is something different. I hope that makes some sense. Yes, that makes perfect sense. And that same friend zone thing, it's like... Yes, true. <laughs> if you're put in the friend zone, now you don't really know if, like, should I just cut that off? Should I... Is it where I'm a friend, but we consider pursuing each other? Or, you know, so it leaves you in, like, a queried spot. So I kind of understand that. Um, Alexia, your hand is up. Oh, hi, good evening, guys. Yeah, so I wanted to uh, well, ask and also add to what. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, I don't know if you're hearing me. Yeah, we're good hearing you, Lexi. Okay, um, yeah, so um, we know that, especially in our culture today, um, there are a lot of other um, sub sub eddings to friendships these days and i know in our especially in the christian community sometimes we find that you have to have a clear definition of what your friendship is because i found that a few people or you know might have different meanings for friendship especially when it is opposite gendered friendships or they say oh we're just friends and you know, it's more than that. So for years or less than that, you've been having feelings for each other and you've never verbalized it. So one of the things that I believe that in order to allow friendships to thrive as well as relationships ongoing is to have um, boundaries. I think that's one of the most important things. Verbalize the the what what they I don't know what the confines of your friendship is first before you are right, so if I am a plat platonic friend with you we're Christian friends learning each other brother and sister growing in Christ define it so that when the time comes for either of you or either parties to you know branch off into a relationship then if it's just strictly a friendship you know, it won't be messy or it won't bring about a lot of heartbreak and disappointment, you know. So I believe boundaries is very important as well as being more verbal to what this is or what it is because we are human beings and the only thing that separates us from the world is the mercies of God. So we have the same feelings, we have the same up and downs like any old lad you know, who is not yet aware of who Jesus Christ is, you know, so we have those things to deal with still. And it's, it's so um, amazing to me. Sorry if I'm talking too long. You can't cut me off probably if I'm checking too much. Um, you know, it's so amazing that God did not give us like a blueprint to dating. And one of the reasons why I think that is, is because he knows each of us are different individually you know each of us have you know we 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 like this see and god i believe that he's so beautiful in his creation that he made all of us different and in every nook and cranny we probably have that friend or have that person that you know we we mesh well with but you know there are stages to that meshing so I think that is one of the reasons why God did not give us a clear cut blueprint to this thing called dating and relationships. Why? Because he knows that each of us are different. And in order for us to have healthy relationship, first it has to start with love, you know. So and sometimes our feelings cross over in that definition of love, but 
you know, as we progress, God is healing, helping, and restoring us to see relationships and partnerships in his way. So, yeah, it wasn't really a question I was asking. I just wanted to share that. So, yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Oh, my gosh. I loved everything that you said. Thank you so much for sharing. And great, you're free to talk however long you want. <laughs> That's what this is for, so we can talk with each other. And um, you said something about boundaries. And there's a question here that says, should you break up with someone if they push your physical boundaries? So that's a question out there. Or just the topic of just boundaries overall. What are some must-have boundaries yes. you think should be in a Christian relationship? So let's start there. My answer is yes. I was just going to say, Julie, you were talking, you're coming and drop me. Yes, I did just cut off. So, <laughs> uh, Brandon, hand is up. Go ahead. I have like a yes question mark, and here's why I say that. I think the starting place for any relationship in which there's a challenge must first be conversation. Like there must be some kind of communication taking place that you're able to address that within the space of the relationship before you decide that, hey, I need to leave. However, if it's a case that despite communication and expressing clearly that those boundaries are exist and you are uncomfortable with those boundaries being pressed, then for the principles that you as an individual stand for, by God's grace, you have to decide that I will choose godly values over my feelings for this person and choose to, to separate from that space. But as I said, that's after having communication with this person um, and seeing where that goes from there. Thanks, Brendan. Go ahead, Monique, and then Julie. Why to to be very honest, you know, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm an independence person um, when it comes on to physical boundaries because again, as Brendan would have rightfully said, there is conversation that would be held prior to. But for me, it depends because um, I found myself to be on both ends of the spectrum where I would have um crossed a particular physical boundary with a person that i was dating at the time no and that caused the relationship to end other <laughs> things but why i'm saying what i'm saying is because um you have to know your non-negotiables in your physical boundary element so for me so so some people them them not have no issue a whole hand some people them set them boundaries so no touching of of boobs and bottoms and certain areas you know for the meals um not rub down pan chest no feel up in a neck back but one day y'all are out and you know the feelings is feelings and the breeze just happened to be a bit cooler than usual and um y'all holding hands and sitting down and being merry and talking Is not the brain May I come? Here, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yes, and the breeze is breezing more than usual, and on a feel comfortable, and y'all, somebody just happened to touch somewhere that should not have been touched, right? And um, it's in that moment you have a like recollection, like, oops, sorry, um, that shouldn't have happened. And what then? Do you end the relationship because of that? You can't because it's not like y'all did it intentionally. It's because you're a human being. You're going to want physical touch or some type of attention, right? So um, I wouldn't say for that reason, but if it's where um if it's something that may have been reoccurring then reoccurring and you both you know say 
X, Y, Z. This is an issue for me. Do not do this. So, for example, um, you're in a relationship. The guy says he doesn't like when time you, um, you're, ho- you're touching neck back or whatever the case may be. And you persistently are causing, you just constantly are finding your hand around him neck back and him tell us if you stop it. Yeah, him have to put him hand down and foot down. I say, all right, clearly you don't have no respect for me and I have no respect for my boundaries. So I have to go end this right here because you have no regard, regard for me and what I am trying to help us to maintain our purity before God because we know what one touch can lead to. You understand? So again, for me, yeah, it depends. It depends in a sense, in, in short. Amen. Yeah, I agree with both Brandon and Monique. But before I give my answer, Ravi, can you repeat the question, please? Okay, so the question was, should you break up with someone if they push your physical boundaries? Okay, yes. And I say that because of the word you use, push. Now, if we already had a conversation about what our boundaries are, and we establish why we have that boundaries, it would be because we're trying to stay on the path that God wants us to be on, right? And if somebody is pushing that, that means they're trying to push me away from God. And if it's a constant thing, then obviously that person needs to go back on their checking board and see where they are with God and what boundaries they need to set up for themselves as well. So yeah. If that person is trying to push me, then that's a red flag that maybe this person isn't for me because whoever I'm with, they're supposed to be trying to get me closer to God, not away from. Amen. Right, right, right. Noel, hand is up. Yes, amen. So um, just wanted to share a point from a book that we've been going through in our fellowship. It's called... The Sacred Search. That, yeah. <laughs> so it's called The Sacred Search, and um, it's basically a book about four young people about choosing how to choose their partner. It's written by a pastor who has been married for 30 odd years. I'm sure by now it's more. Um, and he's also a marriage counselor. And I just love the structure of the book because it is written from the perspective of both males and females. So he'll be like, hey, ladies, I know that you like this, but this is the outcome in reality. Hey, guys, I know that you like this, but this is the outcome in reality. So he actually touched on this point of, you know, like some people being together and um, males sometimes, sometimes, sorry, sorry, sometimes males get excited when they realize that, oh, you know, their girlfriends, they like the feelings, they like the touch, they like all those things because sometimes guys like um, love, also guys, their love languages are touch, right? And he was saying that that's actually, as Noah loves to say, a red flag because, um, because when someone knows that, hey, as was spoken about, when someone knows that, hey, this is something that you're not necessarily supposed to be engaging in, and they keep pushing that boundary, pushing that boundary, that shows you the character that they'll have in marriage. And he was coming from the background that sin is sin. So if they're showing you that they cannot control their um, appetite to such an extent from before there, he was talking um, from the point of view that, you know, the girlfriend just always wants to have sex, always wants to do all of these things. Like he was saying that that's actually a big red flag because when they're um, your wife, they're just always going to be thinking about their needs and what they want and all those things. So he was me like putting it from the point of view that sin is sin and it shows up as nice sin before, but when you get married, you're just like, wow, this person is selfish. They're always thinking about themselves. Yes, because that's what they were doing with you before. So yeah. Wow, well, thanks for sharing that. And just to say welcome to all of you guys behind that behind Noel's screen as well. Um, so that <laughs> thank you guys and see your beautiful faces. <laughs> welcome, welcome. 
All right. Anybody else had anything to say on that topic of physical boundaries? All right. Let's dive into another question then. Okay. Um, here is one, right? Oh, Monique. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just wanted to add a little quick thing. Um, something that I had to learn as well was that because you know, in our relationship, well, let me talk for myself. <laughs> well, because you know, I'm gonna talk to a guy in a long, long time and stuff. I'm not used to, I'm not going to know my boundaries off the bat. Certain things me know say, yo, is a no go, right? No kiss. You no know, touching, stir, certain stuff, like, right? we know that. But as I've grown to understand when I'm in the relationship, like, all of a sudden, hand-holding is, is, is now going to become a boundary because that is a bit much for me. You understand? So I think as you, as you grow in the relationship, um, you should also be open to going back to the table to readdress um certain boundaries or to tighten certain boundaries um to prevent you from um not being pure before god not just physically but men excuse excuse me mentally you know because your thoughts are carry a certain places when i forgot so mm -hmm, definitely talk about the amending your boundaries as you go forward yes love that point i think that point is very important um momo because as you said sometimes you enter into a new relationship and yet sometimes you're not gonna know some of the boundaries until you buck up on it so then it's good to have somebody that you can communicate with and go back to the drawing board and say okay this is something that we can't do anymore because it is you know pushing the boundaries so that's a good point to have all right so another question is hmm is being unequally yoked that serious? What if I lead my partner to Jesus through our relationship? Big question. Let me read it again. Is being unequally yoked that serious? What if I lead my partner to Jesus through our relationship? Question to you all. Sorry, answering the first part. Yes. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, Noel, hand is up. Has everybody here said, like, you know, in a chorus, <laughs> red flag? Red flag. <laughs> Personally, for me, I don't think it's worth the risk. You know, it's a, it might happen, you know? That is a very, you know, big thing, yeah. you know? It, you, it might go the other way. You might go down, you know? Because it's two people in the relationship. But if I'm led off my Christian path, we also have to think about that. And I also think like, all right, so, you know, say you like this person, say they're making effort towards that. I think that you shouldn't be a part of the process of them coming to God. You should play your role as someone that's, you know, in their life, but you understand that, hey, this person is on their spiritual journey. I cannot become too attached as nonsense because they might be draw me off my path so you know let's not necessarily go to the um boyfriend girlfriend stage yet can still so i can still get to know the person because i can still get to know other people but at that point i feel like you should encourage that person to have a spiritual mentor someone that's their sex someone that's older than them and see where that leads them down that path spiritually because you getting attached into that that's only going to cause feelings and everything and you don't want them to like look back one day and say the only reason why i joined this church was for you you know like i don't re really know why i did this or i don't really feel like doing this anymore because our relationship isn't working out so i don't feel like anyone's um spiritual spiritual journey should be linked or attached to a part love that love that love all the points wow went straight into it <laughs> yes brandon go ahead yeah i completely agree with nisi 
And regarding the first part of the question of if it's that serious, I think we can look to the Bible to find out if it's that serious. When we consider the story of the children of Israel, when God carried them into the promised land, the direct instruction from him was not to intermarry with the heathens within the place that he was giving them. Because he, as God, knew the risk that would have been presented if they chose to intermarry. And we can see from the story of Israel how that resulted. They chose to intermarry with the, the heathens who existed in the land of Canaan. And as opposed to the Canaans being one for the cause of God, it was Israel that lowered their standard of godliness to meet the heathens that they were intermarrying with. And that's not to say that, you know, the people that we're talking to are heathens, not necessarily saying that. But what is true is that the Bible sets a standard and God knows why he sets that standard. And then just a, a, an experience through a friend. Um, There's a friend who I knew in high school, a female friend who was talking to a guy and, you know, she was a Christian and he wasn't a Christian. And, you know, kill her dead. She said that she was going to win this guy for the Lord so that they could have a beautiful Christian relationship. The guy going to church with her every weekend, you know, them waking up and praying together and all these things. Um, And then push comes to shove and they eventually broke up. And you'd think, you know, maybe this, 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 my friend's um, encouragement through that relationship would have won this guy for the cause of God. You know, my friend bought him a Bible and everything. Best believe that when they broke up, the guy returned the Bible and that was the end of his Christian experience. In other words, his relationship with God was tied to his relationship with this girl. And so I'm not going to say that things like this have not worked out before. I don't know all the experiences that people have had, but there's a risk that God does not, a risk that God calls us to avoid by maintaining the, the principle of being equally yoked. And if we trust God wholeheartedly, then that means that we can trust him to find us a partner and we don't have to go out into the land of Canaan and try to find that partner for ourselves. Love that, love that. But if it really have to return, like, wow, wow. Yes, Noel. <laughs> yeah, and on the flip side though, like, um, my mother wasn't from the same denomination as my father, but in the end, like she ended up um, converting and she didn't convert like because of him. She converted because she had a personal walk with God. She baptized and everything. And then her entire, well, her people in her family also converted to or, or faith, the faith that I have now. So it's like, it's not like it doesn't happen, but as I said, like that person cannot connect or say, okay, I'm just joining the church for this person. They have to have that personal appeal with God to be like, okay, yes, God is calling me to do this and not for this person. Yeah. And something I've been seeing, which is kind of weird, but you know, uh, well, not weird, but I see it a lot, especially in my church. I don't know about everyone else's, but it's how some people come into the church, like, I'm a and man, you know, come I see a, a nice girl, I see a niece here, and I say, oh, okay, she's a Christian girl. The best way to get her is to come into church, and come in, and go. For even if it's a year, a year and a half, you know, so bad, I can go to the church every every Saturday, or, uh, and I know a niece is going to be there, sit beside her, talk with her. But I'm, I notice she wants, she go tell me, oh, I want a Christian man. So I'm going to get baptized, and we go get married, and that's it. I secure the bag, uh, the ring is on the finger, and you know, she has the, the gray behind her name, and I am fantastic. And you never see me in church again, and it's something that happens so often in my church, and it's so scary. Um, and I, 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 just, I just think, the, again, the risk is, is really, yeah, it always a lot. Nice. I completely get what you guys are saying. I'm loving the points. Um, there's a question here that I'd just like to interject as well. That's here because it came up. And the question is, should Christians of different denominations date or marry? So again, should Christians of different denominations date or marry? Yes, Momo. Um, 
a lot of persons um, who are a part of respective denominations allow the denomination itself to become their identity. When you're talking about two persons who have no um, ascribe that particular denomination to be their identity and not the fact that they're a child of God, then you're going to have a conflict um, because there are certain things that they hold true to and um, is either they're going to now try to impose that quote-unquote theology or belief on you and you're going to have like some type of ruffler conflict Versus when you have two Christians who are going to different churches, um, when they come together, their relationship can thrive. Where it is that the baseline is that we are going to find out what God truly says about this and not what our pastor is preaching or what the denomination is used to. For example, um, no shade to the Pentecostal people, none at all yeah. right but um pentecostals um believe that if you don't speak in the the to if in tongues you're not filled some pentecostals believe that if you don't speak in tongues you're not filled well you have other um a methodist per se don't believe in um you speaking in tongues is it that the two of these people being in a relationship cannot work no i wouldn't say that if it is that both parties are willing to come to an understanding, to under, to study what does the scripture say about this and ask God to give them insight together, to learn about him themselves, you know, like bring it to him. Because you still have people in the same denomination. We're conflicted the same way. So it's not to say that they can't date each other. I just say that they, they have to be willing to learn about God together to renew their minds from what they would have been taught in some type of way. So that's my two cents in that regard. Thanks, Momo. Thanks for that. I love your two cents. I'm going to hear what um, Noel has to say. I keep referring to it as Noel because that's the name on the thing, but I don't know what to call yeah, you again. That's... <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's the healthy first, but it's fine. Um, Bethany raised her hand before me, so she can go ahead. Oh... <laughs> All right, um, so for a brief, okay. So remember at the beginning of the discussion, we said that for Christians, we're dating to, with the intention of marriage, right? So I've just given like a real life experience, right? Um, I, you know, you, you're going, you, you're dating around and stuff like that. And I decided to date, uh, um, Seven day Adventist person. I'm a Sunday worship worshiper person, right? I'm a Anglican to be more specific. So, you know, you you know, you you get into know the person and you find that this is fun and everything, but then you realize, okay, we're dating for marriage, and then we had to seriously have the sit down conversation and say, What would like what would this if this goes further, what would this look like? What kind of life would this look like? I eat my pork. <laughs> I'm not gonna give that up for him and all of that. Not up for him or what? Okay. Um, there are so many differences and things that we would not say eye to eye on. I think about like the confusion our poor children would have when it comes to doctrine. You're going to mommy church on Sunday. You're going daddy church on Saturday. The the confusion of it all made us realize. Okay, this probably can't work. Um, in the long run, one person would have to switch over to the other side. And it doesn't necessarily mean that, like, like for example, what Nisi had said, where her relative went on a journey and they realized, okay, I want to convert to being um, a Seventh-day Adventist um, worshiper, right? What do you call it? They, they'd convert to that denomination. And I even have some of my friends now who left the Anglican church and they're no a part of SDA denomination because when you get serious like you have to think about not just you you guys as a couple because maybe you might be firm in what you believe in and you guys can still compromise but then you think about the fruits of your marriage which are the children and the kind of confusion that they might have 
I mean, so maybe some persons don't get confused and you find that balance by seed being very, it probably will be very, very hard. And I, I don't know how you're going to explain it to the kids. But, um, oops, what's this? Sorry. So, yeah, just giving like a real life example. It sounds like it's something that can be done. It, I know some people do it, but I don't really see it going very well, but that's just my take. Yeah. Money, money. I completely, I completely agree, and well, I agree to an extent. But I understand um, where the the complications would actually arise because, as I said, people are hung up on the denomination itself. Like they don't want to let go of, oh, I've formed myself here, and this is what I believe. This is who I am. I'm a Pentecostal. I'm a Seventh Day Adventist. I am that and when it is that they meet another brother or sister in christ they they don't know how to um put that aside <laughs> and actually address the fact that okay we're christians let's let's start with the baseline there i'm not wrong for worshiping on a saturday you're not wrong for worshiping on a sunday why is it that you believe that are you know actually dig into it but if that is going to be too much work or if the two of you guys love each other enough, I think you'll be willing to put in the work to get to the bottom of, you know, allowing this thing to work. But if you're not really and truly not have the time or mental capacity and not willing to make the sacrifice or quote unquote compromise, we go and want somebody to say them. that it's not you, you're not willing to make the sacrifice. But I think there are some foundational <laughs> things that your marriage have to um you have to agree on like mm -hmm. um okay remember how i mentioned the children you know, is mainly the children because you as an individual you can say okay you do you you do you like i respect your decision with um being a vegetarian or whatever it's okay as adults but when you get children involved and mm -hmm. what you're going to explain to them and all of that it 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 but but that's why it should have been resolved. I've met actual, I've met some children from that kind of union, and they're very, they grow up very, very confused because no, it's but that's two why completely that different. Children come in the picture. It it's easier said than done, but I've seen it, and I've not seen an example where it actually work out. It depends. If it's like a Pentecostal and an Anglican, you guys agree on most things apart from probably just speaking in tongues but when it's a whole different 365 i mean the, we agree on some foundational things but it's i, I just can't see the sd and the sunday worshiper but um maybe if both on agree on the sunday like i don't know it's just very different or doctrines just very different and i don't really see i've never seen it work out well i'm so sorry that's the hill i'm dying on but that's that's it from me right now sorry guys i go board the line real quick but i feel like it can affect the the couple themselves even without the children because if i'm in a relationship I want to be able to strengthen my relationship with Christ, not only by myself, but also with my partner. So if it's a case that we have fundamentally different beliefs, I won't be able to go to my partner and say, hey, you know, I'm struggling with, well, maybe not struggling, but I believe in this, but I can't go to you about it because you don't believe in this. You get me? Like, it'd be harder, I think, to really grow together together as a couple because we're believing two separate things all right noel next and then brandon hi so my point was basically shared amongst everybody but i just want to say it still can you hear me yeah we can hear you closer to the mic is that possible Basically, 
having your partner respect your beliefs versus share your beliefs that's just totally different having your partner say you know what i respect you you do you versus them saying you know what home it's friday night it's time for worship and you know the husband is the head of the household he would lead the friday night devotion that is what you want for yourself but instead you're with this person and he prefers to do his laundry on friday nights while you're there with the kids having friday night vespers and there's no husband to lead the devotion how would you feel about that over the years it's tearing away it's eating you out and what you actually want for your family which is based biblically based because the husband is the head of the household he's not there how are you going to feel after a while and there's another point i wanted to make that i noticed in real life this couple who is unequally yoked so they're always traveling to church he usually drops her at church and he would have the radio on playing all different kinds of music that's obviously not christian based that's not sabbath friendly um sometimes she would tell him to turn it down or to turn it off but you know after a while he just stopped turning it off and he just kept playing it um so when she keeps on having to tell this person to turn it off turn it off he's gonna feel as if she's trying to control him or she's trying to change who he is or you know you're trying to tell me when i should listen to music versus when i shouldn't listen to music this is my life and you're trying to push your beliefs on me so there is a lot that comes into play another point we spoke about the children which church would the children be members of will it be the sabbath church or the sunday church who makes that decision how how does even how does someone even come to that conclusion i don't know but your partner wants to cook his pork and his shrimp he's a chef and he loves cooking <laughs> stew whatever <laughs> stew pork and stew everything and you who are you to tell him that he shouldn't cook in the kitchen and in the same part exactly that you eat the chicken <laughs> this is his house and you're telling him that he can't use his chicken use his kitchen to cook pork and whatever he or her <laughs> so yes that's my point I just wanted to share guys to really read the book because it talks about these things and it even goes into like how important to the mindset of roles are and like that's also something that needs to be discussed and I feel like it's often overlooked like how someone grew up like you know whether someone grew up as their father always being a carpenter in the home so they go with someone and they automatically think hey you're a, you're a guy how you don't know how to fix this or hey he grew up um, seeing his mother always in the kitchen if his father doesn't cook and all those things like <laughs> no i'm just saying like some people's house oh sorry 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 but i'm just saying like um those things like are important so i'm not sure if somebody asked that question but all these things like it sounds very minute but it matters it, it matters yeah. and for me my my Death, it's all about definition as well. The definition of stop it, Rihanna. So uh, <laughs> the definition of but we will address that eventually. After this, we will we solve the question. Um, but addressing this question, um, the definition of um unequally yoked, I feel like you know it it would come into play as well because even though we do believe in God, He is God isn't it still you know a difference Different in times. our beliefs and you know um the things we do <laughs> is everybody, is everybody <laughs> glad? Uh, but yeah the definition of unequal yes i believe if we believe different things yeah. it would be some unequalness in the definition mm -hmm. you know so yes no one's this thing <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm right, going to make Brandon and Monique talk, and then we can address the question in the chat, if anybody can. Um, I don't know if it was Brandon first or Momo first. That Okay, go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, Yeah, y'all are about to go on a crazy tangent, but <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, 
what I wanted to comment on is a very important point that Monique raised, and I think it's a conversation that we need to discuss outside of the context of relationships. I've realized that within Christian spaces, people are unwilling to challenge what they believe, that simply because you've inherited doctrine, that must be the way it is, and you're unwilling to compare that with what the Word of God says, or simply willing to have conversations with people who hold different perspectives. And that's so dangerous, but then it also does a disservice to yourself because God forbid I was raised in a family, a Christian family who taught me something that is not biblical. And I say that because I raised this way, because I'm born in this house, I will forever hold on to that truth. That's dangerous. And so even outside of the, the context of a relationship, outside of the context of, you know, you looking who, guys, just be willing to challenge what you believe. Ask yourselves those hard questions. Does the Bible support this? And talk to people of different persuasions. Julie will tell you we're forever talking about, you know, the differences in perspectives that we have and how the word of God matches up to that. And frankly, if we're unwilling for the Holy Spirit to use somebody to speak to us, and we're in a very dangerous space. So I pray that by God's grace, outside of the whole relationship talk, that we say, God, what does your word say? And help me to be willing to accept that, despite what I believe. Yeah, just to, just to get, Brandon said it perfectly, right? But I just wanted to reiterate the point of me saying this. I said that we, the persons, the couple, are the persons who are pursuing a relationship would have to have a mutual agreement from the jump to say, listen, independent of our denomination, are you willing to pursue Christ together to know him independent of our denomination, to know what the word says about the theology that we claim to say we believe and we attach ourselves to? We have to divorce the idea that we are our denominations when we are not. We are children of God, full stop point blank there is nothing that comes after that too much times and that is the problem of denomination in and of itself there's causing be a divide we are all a part of one body the all are we so we worship jesus we believe in the father son and the holy spirit now when you go on different church and one church i tell us something else that's unbiblical that's something where you actually need for addressing at the word that that is nowhere near our, that not gonna help you saying that oh um let me stick to this church when the other person i try to let say listen this is what the word says i know this for myself this is why xyz so I, as a, again before you're reaching at the space where you're married to this person and i have different um you are got different church from the other church now i say it's not gonna work you know but me not believing at that the, everybody Everybody in the house go one church. All of the people in them go one church. Me not depend on the bag of confusion. None of that. God not deal with that. Right? Amos in them words say, can two walk together unless they agree? So me and my husband, I got depend on the same page. So if my husband is a Pentecostal, and me is a non-denominational person, and me is a Seventh-day Adventist, this is something where me actually, before me and my husband are relation, um, whatever, we have to have that conversation prior to say, listen, I know say he's a Pentecostal, me is a Seventh-day Adventist. Um, what do you think? How can we navigate this? Should we you should you be genuinely serious about pursuing me? Are you open to unpacking all these ideologies and learning God together? What day are we going to decide on? For me, I would say to him, say, listen, the only reason why I'm worship on um Saturday or I don't worship on Saturday is because it's convenient or it's not convenient, whatever the case may be. And we work based on that. Like it's a conversation you have pre-marriage, not post-marriage. So yeah, and eventually some type of compromise has to happen because that's how relationships, friendships thrive. Anyway, you take it, you have to make a compromise. And if you don't, you just rob yourself of a gift of a person, whether it be, it could have be a husband, it could have be a friend, it could have be a destiny helper, you don't know. But a lot of us, we cause certain blockages to our lives because we're unwilling to be open and understand from other people's perspective. And you know, yeah. That's just what's my two cents. It's pre-marriage conversation, not post. Thanks, Mumu. Thanks, Brandon. All right, Vicky, you can go ahead now.
I'm so sorry. Look, I'm never to, never plan to talk tonight, you know, but I have to jump in on this point. I do agree wholeheartedly with what um Brandon said. Like, I think we have to like for let me just put it out there, Muda married Brandon any day, even though we go to two different churches, because I find him so discipline so godly so everything you understand because like you know it's just he has really been like a big part of my personal christian journey brandon itself this group has been amazing but i learned so much from brandon you understand but i think one thing that we're forgetting here is submit it to god you know what i mean like the first thing we have to do is submit it to god right and then from there, no, then like Monique said, you have to have certain, I call it prenup conversations <laughs> when you talk about everything. And a part of, and a part of that prenup conversation, you understand you gotta talk about how the kids are being raised and etc. The next thing, um, when you submit it to God, the second thing is that respect, right? Is that really, really godly respect that whether or not you're christian like as partners you have to respect each other right now if i marry brandon right he's a seven day adventist i never grew up seven day right i grew up church and like you guys are talking about me love my pork me love michelle food and so on but i marry a man that does not like that like monique said no you have to think all right respect and compromise because if that is disrespectful to brandon then am i going to really bring that into his house my mother is a seventh day worshiper which a lot of people don't know whenever i spend time with my i lived three years with my mom you understand and every friday night the tv have to turn off there is no pork there is no shell food you understand there is just that mutual respect of whenever i'm around my mother I do not do certain things because I understand that they worship differently from I do. And the Bible speaks about it when I think it was Paul. Is that a Paul or Peter that says you must not? Paul, Paul, yeah, man. Yeah, Paul say you must like disrespect how a man worship, you know, for show off a man and disrespect how they worship God. You understand? So if I'm going to marry Brandon, as his wife, me not going to disrespect him that way. Now, the question is, one, if Brandon would have me as a wife, knowing that I'm a Sunday worshiper, because I wouldn't convert to Seventh-day Adventist, I would respect him, but I'm not going to go to church on, on, on Saturday. You understand? So that would now be the question. Would he be able to respect that? No. To the ladies, I think his niece's point that says, on a Friday night, when your husband is leading devotion, I have to be there. I'm not business if I'm a seventh day or not. I'm going to respect him in that regard, you know? So I think the number one thing is submit the relationship to God and allow God to confirm whether or not this is where you're supposed to be. And then two, in any relationship, whether it's Christian or non-Christian or whatever, there is supposed to be that respect of what this person, what this person what really what means a big deal yeah let me say what's a big deal to this person right so i'm gonna talk my business right i am actually dating a catholic and it's very 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 different from me i friend y'all think all sunday worshipers are the same no <laughs> like no catholics are very different i'm learning you understand and it's like to 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 brandon's point i love the challenge i absolutely love the challenge like when i explain things like all right so for me church believe in god the father god the son god the holy spirit catholics believe in god three in one you understand and then like i live with our aunts that believes that is just jesus the whole of them are just jesus you understand and to me I love the education. I absolutely love the education. I love listening to how they, they explain it and how, what their church preaches and everything. And me and live very peaceful in the house together. We've never had like a clash or anything. She even tell me, you know, like the, um, like baptizing. She came to my baptism and they baptized me in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost at my church. But at her church, they baptized in Jesus' name. And that's the only problem she had and she and she didn't share it with me in a disrespectful manner she just said to me that you know <coughs> sorry <coughs> my church 
baptized is in Jesus name and this is why we baptize in Jesus name and she explained it down to the T and I respect that but that no means to make a get up and go re-baptize you know, you know what I mean so to me respect and understanding and love you see when you do everything from love <clears throat> it makes such a huge difference when you do things from love and respect and then really and truly if God knows that you're just simply not that type of person like this means a lot to me this is what i believe in <clears throat> i mean i think god i got put you with somebody that i got disrespect all of that you know what i mean i don't think i don't if, if it's strife god does not operate in strife and if anything is going to cause strife i don't think he puts it together. So while a person like me would be more open to marrying somebody like Brandon, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't make me lose no sleep. You understand? If Brandon say the pity them for go at church every Saturday, them I go to church Saturday and them I go to church Sunday. You understand? It's a go work out. You know what I mean? Become a love most when I'm respect him. And once he's willing to compromise for me, I go compromise for him. You understand what I mean? But but again, if we realize that it's something that's gonna cause strife and confusion and arguments and so on, then I don't think God are gonna put you with somebody where you understand, like everybody is different. Everybody in this group is different. I'm more a liberal person. I'm always learning. I always call myself a baby Christian because I always just wanna learn. I just wanna grasp. And because of that, I'm open to more things. But somebody like, for example, Brandon might be more serious about getting married to somebody who is a seven day like me because I have been, you know, this is what I believe in. This is what I hold on to. And I, and I feel like God respects that too. And I feel like anybody you marry should respect that too. And the final point I want to make is remember, not every church man or woman is a godly man or a woman you know what i mean so some of us say me not date no non-christian or something trust me i have my boyfriend is not a christian and that man have some godly values in him more than some people with the parastrum i preach you understand and i've prayed over this i've fasted over this i you understand and i'm just like lord me need your guidance for this. Me need you to confirm this for me. You understand? And I'm still going through that. Let like, me don't take it for granted. Say, you know, I'm there. Every time I keep praying and fasting both the times, say, Lord, if me even reach at the altar with this person, and it's not your choice, any right, they so. <laughs> like, you know, that's the type of submission I'm under. You understand? And I think that's the number one thing. Submit it to God. All right. <laughs> so now I has a point to share and then I'll share mine. Okay. So um yeah, I was thinking about it. For me personally, this is a no no. Um not because I <laughs> look down on any other denomination or anything like you know, I can have friends in the different denominations and we can go go along just fine. In fact, I have more like friends from other denominations than I do have Adventist friends. It's, since I came here, I really like met such wonderful people, and um, <laughs> I've become friends with more Adventists. So I don't have any problem in terms of like you know navigating different conversations as Vicky was sharing and respecting other people's beliefs and stuff like that. However, I've always envisioned for myself and my marriage to, and I never want to be the person who I know, even within Adventism, that my husband going to, say, Falmouth SDA and I'm going to King's SDA. Like, it's a no-no for me. Um, personally, I want to be sitting in the same church as my spouse. And not only sitting, but, like, we share the same service. When we come home, we talk about it. Like, that's the type of energy that I'm on. Like, I love to say, oh, remember what happened at church? And, you know, that's really what fills my spirit, knowing that, hey, me and my partner, like, we're worshiping God together. And the oneness. So that's that's what I also want my children to see. Because it's, and right now, it's not really something that's seen in all of the churches. As Noah was sharing, like, 
the father um, he marries and everything and then he stays home or he goes to another church or all these different things. So those things are very important to me. And as Danny was sharing, that family altar is so important. God calls men to be the priests of the household. Like he should be leading out those worship services. And yes, as a woman, you can lead out the worship too. But like when a young boy sees his father like taking on that responsibility of come, let's pray. You know, let's talk about the Bible together. What did you understand from what we just read? It really does something to him and causes him to understand his role in society, knowing that, hey, this church thing is not just something that my mother does and I guess it's a woman thing. No, like God calls both partners to like come to him and worship him and it's something beautiful. So personally, that's how I feel about it. Um, so yeah. yeah. I feel like you touched on it, Missy, and, and Vicky touched on it as well. This is a short point of how, you know, it's more than even um, denomination because, again, we can be of the same denomination but still be so far apart. So it's really a, a journey and asking God, you know, to lead um, or asking him to lead us to the person who is for us, someone who is building us, not not together only as like a relationship, you know, we're good, but more of we're being led closer to God. Amen, amen, amen. I love all these wonderful points, love everything that we're talking about. So thank you guys for continuously sharing. I'm loving everything. I'm sure everybody is loving everything as well. Um, all right. Uh, anything else to say on that or we can move on to the next question nothing else all right so this question says what's the difference between dating and courting what does each stage involve so what's the difference between dating and courting and what does each stage involve go ahead guys Just a quick point, a quick difference. I would think dating, dating would be getting to know people who fit the description of someone who you would potentially marry. And courting is exclusive. You focusing on one potentially fitting partner. And I just want to share how, you know, Danny said that and how practically like that can be um, applied. So our church sisters who, have now, who are now in Jamaica, um, they had mentioned something and it really stuck with me that like the world just always makes it seem like, you know, you're going on a date, it's you dress up nice and you sit down at a fancy restaurant and you get to know the person like that. It doesn't necessarily have to look like that at first. Like, you know, you like someone, the initial phase. Maybe you know a friend of that friend, you can say to that person, hey, let's all go out together because your aim is to get to know them not only in like a formal setting, like, um, okay, this is me and they, whatever they tell you about themselves, that's literally the only thing you have to know now. But if you're like in a friendship group yeah. with them and, you know, maybe you go skating together, you realize, oh, you know, he maybe helped other people when they fall down. Like it's something that now you're seeing his character. It's not just what he's telling you about himself. So um, it really caused me to think about dating in a different light in terms of getting to know people and how that can look like um, and how that can actually help you to make better decisions rather than that person just telling you what they think of themselves. And also the book that I was telling you guys about it also mentions some things, some questions that you should ask people when you're dating or courting them, um, the different types of questions. So it's something that you should definitely um, check out. Zari has a question. Okay. Um, so. Hello. <laughs> so the question, I have a question on you that when you're dating versus courting, um, when do you say your boyfriend and girlfriend? 
when you're dating or courting when you're dating to like you're moving and that's the transitional question so that's yeah it's very important when you're dating not to let any of those potential persons feel as if they have a special romantic relationship yeah. with you yeah. because that's not really what they do and I'll share, yeah, um, I'll share something that, you know, once at church we were having this conversation and different, you know, elders, and so they were sharing their points. And I remember them saying, you know, dating is, you know, you, uh, I, as a boy, you know, I'd go out and see multiple individuals who, I'm, who I see as probably suitable of sorts. And then, you know, just approaching them as, you know, friends of so you know as Nisi would say you know we go skating or, or we go um to a football game or a picnic or so and then i say oh okay let me say i talked to Nisi, i talked to to danny and i talked to zaria and so on and i said okay this person is like this and like that and it was so wild because i feel like um our media it's always dating is you know one-on-one one on one. as they say yeah. we go out to wear the nice clothes and like oh Yes, yeah, so it kind of felt like a a weird thing to hear, yeah. but it's still an important, and this is the best way to approach dating, you know, as young Christians, I think, because you know, when we go into these, when we go dating as how the world sees it, we might be tempted to do it as the world does it, you know, after the date, what comes next, you know, uh, <laughs> different things might come into play. So you have to know yourself and probably approach it from a more, you know, healthy way. Yeah. Yeah, so I found it really wanted you to explain on your point. Then. My point, which one, the first first one, or we can do first response? The dating versus dating. Okay, dating. Sorry, I don't know if it just needs, I can't really hear you, hon. Yes, so you wanted me to expound. So, uh, dating. Dating should not have any romantic feelings. Honestly, I don't think it should. Because if you're talking to this guy and you're making him feel as if he's the only guy in your world, and then he finds out that you're talking to another guy in the same romantic way, how is that going to affect how he feels about you? He's going to feel some sort of jealousy or yeah, something yes. and betrayal. Yeah. Uh, he's going to feel used and he's going to be like, okay, you're with this, like with everybody. How mm. is this special in any way? So I think you should really reserve more romantic feelings for what's the other courting, courting yeah. and sex as well, because you know, Sex is for marriage. Yeah. So sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so, any questions, Julie? <laughs> I have a question then. I don't know if it's just because I'm seeing dating a bit differently, but how would you differentiate between, uh, let's say, hanging out with a friend and dating with the intention of you know knowing someone like that because I, I don't know if it's just because I'm full of feelings or what but if I am dating someone and I'm getting to know them then there's gonna be some sort of romantic feelings involved yeah and it's going to definitely I... come before the friendship <laughs> oh um to what um, Danny was saying, I what I understand from me from my point of view is that like yeah like the feelings, the feeling a lot of feelings come more when you're just like looking at this one person and saying okay I'm gonna get to know him and everything and when you finally get to know him you're just like wow he's such a perfect person but when you're like you know as we said dating as in you know but when you're just like dating you're getting to know multiple people like it's not just that one person and another point that i um one of my other church sisters said was sometimes we just date people that we say oh this is my type or i'm attracted to this person so you know that's the type of person i want to get to know um that's not necessarily what you should always do because 
as we see in a lot of our churches when married couples stand up and they say uh, well at least a pastor i know he was saying when he was growing up the the woman that he would normally see in his household that's what he thought okay this is the type of woman i'm going to marry and that's not the type of woman that he married and she thought the same way so if they were always dating people who they thought that okay this person fits into who i find attractive or this person fits into what i've always seen and what i want then they would have never gotten married so you cannot always like say okay you're just gonna date so to speak the way i um refer to dating as getting to know people like in friend groups and stuff if you're gonna always be looking at the persons that you're just like this person checks my box this person is what i'm used to this person is what i like then more than likely you're not really making yourself available to learn more about other people because as we grow to our types change whoever we like changes and you're kind of like closing yourself off as then you were saying to other people and other possibilities things um mindsets that you've never even experienced before and i understand what the alexia was saying in terms of um she said, I disagree. Why date if you don't have feelings for a person? So you should date people you don't like. Feelings don't always equate sex, right? Feelings don't always equate sex. And um, in terms of in terms of dating people you don't like, I think the example that I used was like superior in terms of that. Like these people, you only know what you like based on what you've experienced. You don't know what you like outside of that. We didn't know what China would be like if we didn't come here. You get what I mean? Like we have an idea in our minds of what it can be, but when we came here it was something totally different from what I even expected. I didn't even know people don't use cash here. Like that's crazy to me. But it's something outside of the periphery of what I have experienced prior to that. So I just want to try to make people remember that hey you might think you like this now but that's not necessarily what you like five years from now two years from now ten years from now so try to get to know people on a wider basis well i have a question so then what if the person only wants to date you let them know you're dating other people you're getting to know other people mm -hmm. and i think that's also something that should be spoken mm -hmm. about you let someone know that hey I'm getting to know other people so they don't take it as yeah. what you was saying like you know in their feelings, you yes. right get to, know you, get to know you too right all those things and you said uh why date if you don't have feelings for a person i'm saying like when you're dating that person don't text them like you know heart emojis or you know those, don't get like attached in that way saying like you know what We've been talking for two months now. I think, you know, just because we've been talking for two months, this is the path I should take. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to attach history to their decisions. Just because we've been together for eight years, we should get married. That's not true. Mm -hmm. So try to reserve habits that are associated with being in a relationship out of dating. Yeah. That's and, what I was saying. Yeah. And this is something that, you know, I think well personally i am working on um because for me it's like oh what you mean i'm supposed to talk to a lot of people i probably mix up their <laughs> names and everything because it's a lot to remember but um yeah like i feel like it's very important for us to get to know people outside of what we initially know as attractive Thanks, guys. All right, Alexia can go and then Betty. Has his hand up for a while. Sorry, Vicky, what is it? Brandon, your hand was up? Yeah, it was. Um, it, it was just a question. I originally said agree, but then I have a question mark after that agree. Um, because the definition of dating doesn't sound that much different than friendship. It just sounds like making friends with people um and then if that's the case and i understand the perspective that as much as is possible trying to detach feelings from the experience and i can understand how that works in the setting where you're going out with friends and the approach to dating is a group setting but in the case where it's more 
of an individual dating experience where it's not just you and a group going out but you and a person going out i think that shifts there's some shift from simply you not know, just a friendship vibe to something that's more personal and so i'm trying to understand the perspective of dating that you take if it can on one hand it's like trying to make it void of feelings which i think is impossible because we're emotional beings you know um, and I, I, as I said, I understand how that can be possible in the context of a group setting, but when you're starting to, it becomes more personal, it lends itself to be difficult to be void of feelings, especially since, as you said, the fact that you're dating is you see potential in this person to be that person. So from the onset, you see something in that person that you like. In my mind, to make that experience void of feelings seems almost unnatural, or I, I don't, I'm not quite sure what words to use. <laughs> uh, not void of feelings, because yeah, we're emotional beings, but it's more of self control. Because you know that if you do this, this person is going to feel that way. If you touch them in a certain way, they're going to feel a certain type of way. They're going to be like, okay, you're touching me there. Mm -hmm. You're probably looking towards getting more serious with me because of that touch, that particular touch. Oh, of course, you're going to have feelings of, what are the feelings? Hmm. Excitement. You're going to probably feel happy every time you see this person. But that does not mean that, you know, this is going to be the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. There's no shame in feeling happy when seeing somebody. There's no shame in feeling your heart skip a beat if you see somebody. There's no shame in that. That's normal. That's totally normal. Um, in fact, I think those hormones that are released when you see somebody that you're like, I think it's the same as somebody taking drugs. <laughs> I don't know what kind of drugs, if it's a morphine or what, but there's a certain happiness associated with meeting somebody who you actually enjoy spending time with and that's okay don't neglect how you feel how you feel is how you feel and just learn how to control yourself okay thanks guys um uh alexia your hand was up well, yeah, um, Brandon had shed some light on it as well, but I'm also, I'd also like to add that um, self-control is very important, as well as sometimes we even dig ourselves into deeper holes. You know, you can be serially dating for years of your life when God brought somebody for you that you are saying, oh, I'm going to stop at I won't have any feelings for this person because no, probably this is wrong, probably this is right. So serial dating can lead to a lot of confusion in one man. You're one person. You know, each of us are going to have feelings for people. I don't think that God would give us this um, this this ability to feel because we can love everybody. You know, it's important because that's what the Lord says that we should love everybody you know we should love all men but then there are different heights and depths to when you want to have a relationship god's way relationships that you know clearly seen and one of the most important things and things i believe if you are going to go on that path of serial dating because it can make you be in stuck for years not figuring out who god brought for you you know is to fast and pray. So if you're talking to Tom, Dick, and Ari, and you say, oh, wow, I have feelings for Tom, Dick, and Ari, fast. And it's very important to fast and pray and say, God, I am confused. Maybe I am the one that did myself in this hole because you never lead me to go talk to Tom, Dick, and Ari. You know, I should have probably just cut off that feelings for Tom and they talk to Harry alone. And talking to somebody does not mean that you're going to be intimate with them. You can have feelings for persons. Feelings does not equate that you're going to go into sexual intimacy with somebody. That means that 
the control that you have been praying for that's the holy spirit that will help you with being self-controlled as you as well as you establishing boundaries so that you don't enter into spaces that will cause you to fall to sin then you know but you having strong feelings for somebody it does not equate you having sex with them or leading to you all the time feelings are are, are good you know to lock off your feelings you know it's not a death sentence if you have feelings for somebody or you know have feelings then so i believe one important thing that we should add to it if we're going to go on the path of dating um dating as oh um daniel i'm not sure if that's your name dear but daniel had explained it is to um have fast fast and pray about it you know fast pray about it and don't serially date you know don't confuse yourself too much i believe that's yeah that name sorry i messed up it yeah, that's it that's all i had Thanks, Alexia. And Betty, your hand was up as well. You had something to say? Oh, um, Brandon had addressed it, so it's fine. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> Any other thoughts on this question before we move on to the next one? No. All right. So the question is, would you recommend living together before marriage? Um, the mic is a bit low. I'm not sure if we're the only ones who are hearing it low. Okay. I'm hearing it all right. You guys hearing me now? It's good? Yeah, I'm hearing you right. Uh, it's probably our connection. We'll be we'll rejoined. All right. All right. So, yes, guys, the question again Would you recommend living together before marriage? People answering in the chat, yes, no. What is your reasoning behind saying so? So I said, Brie said yes. Brie, you want to expound? <laughs> so Julie put you on the spot to put you on the spot as well. Sorry, I have to talk English. I forgot. <laughs> Brie, shy. Did it? Oh, so she come. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So for me, it will be a yes because I want to know how you are within a close area. Like, are you untidy? Are you a dirty person? Are you going to help me with toys? Are you going to help me within the house? So for me, it will be a yes. It will be like, for me, it will be a make or break because I don't want a dirty person in my house. I want someone that clean. Yeah. Thanks, Bree. I understand your reasoning. Thanks for sharing. Um, who was the next person that had answered in the chat? Julie, you said no. Why? Yeah, because I get what you're saying, Bree, but I don't think we'll have to move in to know that. Like, yeah, um, see me and to see me and to live with me are two different things but conversations can be had to figure all that out and also because boundaries i've seen well i know one particular christian couple that they're not married but they're living together and i don't know how that worked for them but personally i don't think that could work for me just because I feel like I'd get too comfortable and it'd be harder to keep my boundaries up if I'm living with my partner. Thanks, Jules. Brandon, your hand is up. Yeah, um, I agree with Julie's perspectives, but then I, another reason why I agree 
um, as to why me and my partner will not live together prior to us being married is because of not just respect for her, but also respect for her household. And then I'm thinking about this from the perspective of a man and me ultimately asking my partner's father for my wife's hand in marriage. I don't want in any way, shape or form to paint a picture that le leaves itself open to interpretation by any, anybody in the sense that as much as it is possible, because I respect this woman and ultimately want to marry her, I am in as many ways as possible seeking to preserve her dignity. And I don't want to put her in a position where people will think certain things are going on. And again, you can't control what people think. And if you live your life based on how you think people will think of you, that's crazy. But as much as is possible, I want to be responsible enough to preserve her dignity as much as is possible. And to know that ultimately when I go to her father for her hand in marriage or whichever parent is present for her hand in marriage, I want to be able to responsibly do so. And for that family to know that I respected their daughter enough to that degree. I don't know if I'm, I think about it in a very new, nuanced, unique way. So that's what kind of leads to my thought processes in addition to the things that Julie would have mentioned earlier. Go ahead, Vicky. I, in my personal opinion, it's a no for me, but my answer is simply, I don't want to live a married life before I'm actually married. I feel like once you're in that kind of setting where you live together, then the, the um, whole role of husband and wife start play. You know, me start to cook, me a wash, me a clean, and there is no ring, you know? And so I don't want to be living no married life before I'm actually married. Like one of the biggest things I've come to appreciate as a Christian is actually my singleness. Like I have really appreciated my singleness. I enjoy my own company. I enjoy God's company. Like, you know, COVID never bothered me. I was fine, you know, you know, worshiping every day. I need for going away. And I feel like that too has prepared me a lot for when the two becomes one. You know what I mean? And I feel like when the two becomes one, that's when the household should become one too, in my opinion. That's my personal thing when it comes to living with somebody. Loving the points, loving the points. Thank you guys. Anybody else has anything to hop in and say? Um, I saw Alexia had a question in the chat that said, how does one prevent sexual intimacy before it's time while living under one roof with your partner before marriage? Well, the one way to prevent it is to not live together under the same roof before marriage. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else have anything they want to add? Yeah, you can also set boundaries as well, because as as Julie was saying, she knows a couple and it works for them. But you know, it's not everybody's going to work for. But if you're in a situation and it works for you and there is some boundaries set or you have to just know yourself and know the part your partner and how that would work out. But I also agree with not living together before marriage because it just seems like too much temptation. Yes, you can set boundaries, but personally me, I don't know. Like just, it's going to be hard and being in the same space all the time, sharing everything and you know it's going to be hard to set those boundaries where you won't fall into temptation so for me it would just be better to how will you run <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right any more thoughts on that question or we can move to another one all right so next question how to walk in purity after messing up and i'm guessing this means that you're in a relationship and you've messed up together as a couple how do you walk in purity after that 
question to you all. What would what would your take be on it? What would you do? Yes, Vicky, go ahead. I will peter it out. Have I have you guys heard about Peter? The man, his disciple that betrayed him three times before the cock crow? And how Jesus called him back and say you come back and you submit yourself to God and you go again. And then Peter has become one of the most powerful disciples in the Bible. I will peter it out. You don't give up. That's the first thing. You do not give up. Wow, love that. Love that, Vicky. Peter it out. Yes, Alexia, go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with Vicky as well. And also, I'd like to add that um, we are we live in a culture or a climate where um, we view sins with different um, ways. You know, that's one of the things that I've been trying to learn, like, and um, reframe my mind to that a sin is a sin. And a lot of the times we put up, put some more weight on a certain one. So, oh, we tell a white lie and we say, Lord, forgive me. And it's so the weight of that white lie is um, it gone because oh, it's just a simple lie that we told, you know, and God, yeah, God, I go forgive me because it's just a simple white lie. But the truth is that lie is still measured up to have the same weight as how one would fall fall short in the way it means of you're in a relationship and you mess up you know once you come to christ and confess and repent and turn you are forgiven we are forgiven you know so i feel as though one of the ways for us to know that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And once we don't turn back to our, the way that our former way of, of living, then once we are walking on the path in holiness with Christ, we are pure. He says that he sets us free. And as far as the East is from the West, so far removed are our sins, you know? So I believe that we should realize that a sin is a sin. And once we confess, we repent and we turn to Christ, you know, then we are free and we're walking. Once we believe and declare that we're walking in holiness with Christ and the Holy Spirit with us, living through us, you know, we are free and we are pure, you know, so continue walking in it. That's what I think, you know, so we frame and we focus our minds and walk in holiness with Christ. Yeah, but understand that the weight of sin is the same all sins are sins you know yeah that's it that's my little take thank you thank you um have a fellowship all right how does a couple walk in purity after messing up i think they should um acknowledge what led them to messing up and try to avoid that um, particular setup. Because if you know that meeting this person at their in their bedroom always causes you to, to you know, do things, try to avoid meeting up in the bedroom. Try to say, you know what, let's meet in the park or let's meet in more public areas that we can, you know, not be tempted to do that. So whatever it is, just try to avoid the steps, the previous steps that will lead mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shaquille also wanted to say something. So I will say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. An individual. <laughs> How does a couple go forward out of missing up? No, you're a couple forward. Uh, you can say for each person. Hello, good morning. <laughs> good night. Good evening. All right. So I think personally, um, after you um messed up, mm -hmm. just repent. You know, a lot of times after we repented, you know, um, there'll um be a weight on our shoulders that you know, what if God doesn't forgive me for this and like you know, but I think that we should just repent with a sincere heart and don't think too much of it, because you know you're forgiven. And all of us are justified 
through Jesus Christ, you know? So that's my take. Amen. 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 All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you guys for sharing. Brendan? Yeah. Um, if there's anything that I've ever been open and honest with, especially in this work in progress space, is my journey throughout this past year and the struggle I've had with being frustrated with myself. You know, a lot of times in prison spaces, we talk about this principle of recognizing that God forgives us. But for the Christian young person who purposed in their heart that this is not something that they would ever entertain and then find themselves in that position the forgiveness from god isn't really the challenging part it's a forgiveness of self you know sometimes we hold these things so near and dear and as alexia said you know even though god views sin as sin for us as young christians sometimes we treasure things that we say we're not going to do and we find ourselves in those spaces and i can speak from personal experience in saying that Forgiving yourself when you've crossed lines that you say you never were going to cross, it's hard and it hurts. And that season of rediscovering yourself and trying to figure out where that fits in God's idea of you isn't easy. So, you know, sometimes we'll just say, all right, yeah, repent and, you know, but for the person who's going through it, it's not that easy. It's not as simple as, yeah, man, I repent and we keep on walking. And so for the persons who have ever found themselves in that situation, you aren't alone. It's not a unique situation to you. Take your time with God because in that period, it's not just the idea of forgiveness, but rediscovering what your identity is like. I saw someone drop in the, in the chat there, the idea of identity. It was Julie who dropped it. That season isn't something that you can rush. Sometimes you try to beat it into place and, and, and get back to that point without healing the wounds that we've caused to ourselves by virtue of the mistakes that we've made. So the person that has fallen in that space, take time with God to rediscover who you are. And remember that that identity has not fundamentally changed because that identity is dependent on one who does not change. And I think the more and more we learn to rediscover God in that space is the more we can heal ourselves in the midst of the mistakes that we've made. Yeah. Love that, love that. Thanks, Brandon. And thanks everybody who shared on that question. Anybody else had anything they wanted to add or ask about that? Or say about that? All right. We're gonna move on to the next question. We're, only, we're going to do two more questions. Um, so the next one is, is it okay for females to pursue males? All right, so question again, is it okay for females to pursue males? Why Brenda I laugh so I will have my... <laughs> Julie is yes. laughing because yes. we yes. had this discussion last yes. week. <laughs> Go ye and find. No, and, uh... for you. <laughs> Yes, so um, we would like to share that. <laughs> Shannon, Shannon would like to share. <laughs> you think it? I'm not hearing you, Shannon. I don't think anything is wrong with pursuing someone. So if you like a guy and you see him and you want to talk to him or whatever, I don't think anything is wrong with that. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, well, the verses that our, I, was, I was going to make reference to, it's really based on marriage, but I can probably use it in this case. Uh, the Bible says, leave the husband should leave his mother and his father, right? And cleave too. Does cleave mean, does it mean everything? Does it mean to seek out or to know, as the Bible loves to use that word, or to love his wife? What does that mean? Does it mean that he should pursue his wife? 
and it also says the husband should love his wife as Christ loves the church. Why is it always initi- saying that the husband should always initiate? He should always, you know, just ensure that <laughs> this is happening. We are in a relationship, and I am. <laughs> I don't know. I just can't find the words. <laughs> but um. Is the head girl, so let him lead. <laughs> yes. And I have no Agreed. problem with that, but I'm just saying, you know, if you see something you like, go after it. You know, what do you mean by that? Go Explain. What if do you mean she by sees me, she thinks I'm handsome, mm-hmm. leave plain and very <laughs> obvious things. <laughs> say you like me, you know, this is say, you know, and I don't think anything is wrong with that personally. You know? Be brave, ladies. <laughs> yes, leave play in and somewhere. He will embarrass you. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I think, I I think that's, like the thing. that's the thing, you know. Um, a lot of women come like Nisi, yes, call it Nisi woman. But yeah, it's, you it's, it's, the, it's the fact that um, the person could embarrass you and it's hard and it's painful. I, I don't deny that. But it's the same thing as a man, the woman might deny me and I will be hurt and embarrassed and feel a way. We're emotional. Yeah, we but are we, emotional. But, uh, so and one mean, thing I've been pointing out to them, men can, we have emotions as well. We it's just, it's just, it's just society <laughs> has told us that we have to be emotional. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we should not, we should not put out, the, like, you know, we have to be bum, bum, bum. When honestly, in our hearts, we feel away, we feel sad, we shed tears, we it's, have a boom, boom, a heart as well. We, it's psychologically, it's scientifically proven that women yeah. are more emotional than men. Please because go the, for your the hormone <laughs> testosterone. I'm sure testosterone it makes you angry. Oh, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> Please don't quote her. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, testosterone does something to you. Like it gives you a kind of logic mentality more than emotional. No, I think it does something like that. No. Yeah. Men overall, I think female hormones are the reason why we're so nothing. <laughs> and sad emotional. Eye for me. Thank you. No, Brandon, stop it. It's true. Eye. You know what? Like, I'm gonna Google it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys. Well, personally, um, it's a it's a tough feeling for me at least because I've seen this week where God is dragging me up, jerking me up. Um for my beliefs in terms of that honestly um it's as danny was saying you know it's quite hard yeah, men are for like, yeah, men are loving men are loving <laughs> right. yeah, yeah they are of course um but you know it's it's hard as a female to like, put yourself out there and get rejected. get rejected because a lot of the times when guys reject girls they feel on top of the world and they go and tell everybody and all these some guys do and they they do and you know they say oh this i never look you is you look me and you know all those things so um you have yeah you have some guys that do behave like that and it's you know it's kind of a turn it kind of turns your mind away from that and then we are facing the situation yes as well yes but (laughs) i I'm thinking now that, you know, maybe as Julie has shared last week, you can write a little note and leave it, you know, if you want to put it anonymous at first and then maybe you add it to initial, you know, you start off small. So if you're a shy girly like me, you start off small, but you pray that God gives him the courage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we love confident women, like, you know, like Joyce. You know? We love Joyce, uh, you know, uh, uh, see with my Brandon, you know. Bold. We love <laughs> bold women. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, so um, it's very, you know, you can start off small and then work your way up with that. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, thanks for sharing. Um, there is a difference between per- pursuing someone and making your interests known. Because I feel it for the men out there, and I feel like I'm going to be draping up a lot of people right now, but I feel it's for the men out there who don't know that someone is interested in them, but the female claim that they make it known. But they didn't really make it known, you know, like, 
us as females, we also have a role to play for making a relationship happen, right? If a guy see me and likes me, but doesn't know that I like him as well, or have any interest at all in him, why would he like say something to me, you know? And just like what we're saying in the chat, like guys have feelings too. So in the same way how a guy might come to us and we reject them, they might, not might, more than likely they feel um, bad about it too, you know? So yeah, I I don't think women should necessarily just sit down and wait for everything to happen. If it happens for you that way, then great for you, sis. I love that for you. But at the same time, I think it's okay for a woman to let it be known that they're interested in a person. And that don't mean say you're going to go all out and like be extra with it. But as I had told Nisi and everybody else last week, I let them know it, you know? <laughs> but yeah. I find it so interesting how y'all think, you know, it's, I think to our Bible story, right? And because we've had this conversation before when we were discussing um, the book of Ruth around chapter three, and we were saying that Ruth put herself in a position to be found by Boaz. You know, as far as Boaz was concerned, he never hear about nobody named Ruth yet. Ruth came, was coming from way, way with Naomi, but she put herself in a position to be found. And we know how that story ended. Was it the case that um, Ruth was running after Boaz? Absolutely not, but she made her presence known. And I find it kind of cute, like how everybody's thinking, oh, you write a little, it's, it's giving preschool, you know, you like write a little bit and like, I like you. Amen. Like, it... <laughs> I don't think it doesn't really want to work like that. I don't know. Um, but it could simply be as simple as getting to know somebody, becoming friends, hanging out in the same friend group. I mean, the idea of writing a letter and being like, you, I like you. And I feel like that may be a bit too abrupt for some people, but doing what Ruth did, making her presence known, operating within similar spaces so that, you know, the person who you're interested in gets your, or you get their attention or vice versa. I don't know which word, but yeah, um, it doesn't, and I'd also like to say there isn't a, a blueprint that works for everybody. Different people have different personality types. Different people approach things differently. So not because something works for Julia or not because something works for Noel means that it will also work for me. And, you know, everybody always talks about this idea of praying in relationships when you get to that relationship stage. But Jesus wants to hear all your prayers. It could simply be, Lord, how do you want me to approach this person? Is this somebody you even want me to approach? How do I go about doing that? And you'll be surprised how God can answer those simple questions if we put them to him. Yeah. After this, yeah. So I just wanted to share to like make it a personal. I firmly believe in that, but guys are so oblivious. Like, like a lot of guys, like, you know, you'll be there and, you know, talking to them every day. Like you probably even like insert yourself where you ne don't necessarily even need to be, and they'll still be like, "Huh? What are you talking? She liked me. I'm so confused." <laughs> that's how they really operate. So yeah, it's a that's a bit tricky to be honest. I feel like the only time guys recognize um. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, that's true, too, you know, but sometimes when guys are shy and they've never really been, I understand what you're saying, Alexia, you know, like maybe Oblivion shows he's not the one. But sometimes when, um, like, for example, the guys who's never had a girlfriend or who maybe had less um, female attention on them, they don't really know when it's being put in front of them. So, you know, it's not necessarily he's not the one. Or he's, you know, he maybe doesn't even like you, but sometimes they're truly just, they're just like, me, you really like me, you know, that type of energy. So I think, you know, as Brenda was saying, you know, it doesn't have to pray to God and stuff like that, but one person needs to make the first move, so to yes, speak. Yes, you mm -hmm. are she. <laughs> okay, yes, so anybody can make the first move. But according to the Bible, the man does the pursuing. Amen. Okay. And so we say I think we've hit a good that. point. No one does that. It's a good <laughs> amen. I know it's a Go ahead, Alex. Go 
Oh. Uh, one more thing for Opsi. Um, so the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. It does not say she who goes looking for a man. A for man. A well, that's a yeah, man. so that is our last viewer. All right, that's that's, 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 that's Danny. <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah. Lovely points, by the way, guys. Um, but as but as Tyrese was saying in the chat as well, you know, pursuing, he believes that it's the man that pursues. So we're not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing with you, Danny. I'm just saying that are, are we as women approachable? You know, a lot of the times, even our body language can turn people off from talking to us. Sometimes we have this notion as women that, oh, we are the prize. We should be pursued. We must be pursued. And that allows us to reach a place of pride that we don't have enough humility to say, hi, how are you doing today? You know, even a simple, how are you doing today? You know, that is you being approachable and letting your guard down you know, to say, oh, I'm inviting you to talk to me. If you were shy before, you can come and have a conversation with me because I am humble enough to know that, yes, you are the one who God designed to pursue me, but am I approachable for you to pursue me? You know, so that's, I, I, that's, why, that's what my view is. So I'm not disagreeing with you, Danny, that you are the prize, beautiful woman, you are the prize, but men are the prize too, and they are deserving of allowing us, we in letting Amen. our guard down for them to know that, you know, you can come and talk to me. I won't embarrass you. I won't discard you. I won't talk to you any type of way. You know, I am approachable. Come and speak to me. Let us have a conversation. So I believe it's a two-way street, you know, so pursuit, of the approachable, I believe it is. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. I love all the points. Um, and I agree with Alexia, too. I think it's a two-way street, too, you know? So, yeah. And everybody's going to go about it a different way. So, what works for you? Um, any more points on this question? Before we move on to the last one. No more points. All right. So the last one is kind of a twofold question. And it says, is there such a thing as the one? And uh, how do we know when they are the one? So is there such thing as the one? And how do we know when they are the one? Go ahead. All right. Mm -hmm. So we had a book about this, and you know, Julia was here when we were speaking about it. Um, the same book, guys, and he was basically telling us like how that even like came into a into a saying like, "Oh, finding the one, finding your other half." It's so me, right? So it's actually from um, Greek mythology, like Plato and all those people, like they had, um, he had a theory that people were together um, and they were like gods or whatever. And they were split in half by other gods so that they wouldn't become too powerful. And that's really weird, like the whole, your other half or um, the oh. one for you is stemmed from. So um, the pastor was saying that like we as modern in Christians, we now have taken on that some form of it and saying, oh, I'm going to find the one for me. And, you know, people like to quote to the story of Rebecca and Isaac and saying that um, she was for him and she, she went to the well and, you know, the servant prayed to God and that was the person that he was supposed to marry. Yes, that was the person that he was supposed to marry because he had certain guidelines he had to follow. It had to be someone that was with the um of his of his nationality, so to speak. It had to be someone who believed in 
um, the same God, it had to have those criteria because he was supposed to carry on that lineage um, for the promise of Abraham. So yes, God had a specific person for him, but we've even seen um, in cases in the Bible too, where the people we know that are together after their spouse die, they marry another person, they're still as equally happy. Like it's not necessary that there's this one person for you. Cause think about it guys, people make decisions in life. People end up choosing the wrong pathway. They lead to drugs, they overdose, they die. It, they meet in a car accident, they die. Like if you really yeah, just yeah, had Ruth and Boaz, yeah. right. Ruth and Ruth and Boaz were, um, you know, set by God to be together. Why? Because Jesus came from that genealogy. So these people were called to be, be together so that a purpose would be fulfilled. No, it's not saying that, oh, you might not, God might not have a one set person for you because maybe he has a purpose for, and yes, Boaz was her second marriage. Look at that. So it's not even the fact that, um, you know, you can't, you're saying, oh, maybe God doesn't have a person for you. Maybe he does. Maybe you're called to ministry worship and that person will help you fulfill that role and that calling upon your life. But apart from that, though, you also need to pray about the fact that, hey, you're going to have suitors and you're praying for your your suitors. This is how I approach I pray for my suitors, you know, the people that I'll be minimizing in the dating pool and saying I'm getting to know them. I pray for certain characteristics in them. And then I ask God that he helps me to choose the best person for me. Because that person might be, you know, and all the other people might be great, but are they the best person for me? God knows the different things that will happen in my life the different situations that I'll experience. Maybe I'll have, a, maybe I'll lose my job. I want somebody who is okay, you know, carrying that burden for a little while. Maybe, and God forbid, I'll become sick. I need somebody that has that caringness in them, you know, that can't, does have a problem being a nurse and all those things. Like, so God knows the trajectory of our life. So we just have to pray that he helps us to make the best decision based on all the right people that he has allowed us to be around but not everyone has a oh you have to marry this person so uh, that's basically what i got from reading the book and i think that it is a biblical approach to it too so anyone else can just share their point anyone here any question okay Yeah, um, I think I'm going to have to disagree with Gary and this book for a second. Um, and here's my rationale behind it. While I do agree with Gary's perspective that the idea of looking for completeness or looking for another half in someone is unbiblical because we're called to be complete in Jesus Christ. And that's outside of the context of a relationship. Where I do disagree with Gary is that whatever the Greeks and whatever they wanted to think, one thing that is true is that God's will is God's will. And when we consider the, the particulars of God's perfect will, to say that God has not decided in his perfect will who he would like us to be with, I don't think that's a, a, an untrue statement. In other words, in the same way that God perfect will can include me choosing a particular job or going to a particular school why should that be any different for a person that god wants us to be with so i don't think that god's will somehow ends prior to a person he wants us to be with what i do agree with though is that in and of ourselves, we don't have the insight, the foresight, or the wisdom to decide who our soulmate must be, but that's where submission to the will of God comes in, where it's, God, who is the person that according to your will, you believe is best for me and help me to find that person. But I don't think it's unbiblical to believe that according to God's will, he has somebody who he wants us to be with. Yeah. I think what you just said, Brandon, I 100% agree with. I will add to it. When the question was first asked, is there such a thing as the one? I was like hesitant to answer because 
it's a yes and no for me in a way and i think the story of ruth and boaz answers the question perfectly for me because listening to you i think i finally formulated what my opinion is i do think that god's will saturates every single aspect of your life but that does not mean that god's will is one person if you know what i mean because i think god's will can sometimes lead you to one person or sometimes can lead you to a person for that season. For example, the same Ruth and Boaz story. Everybody talks about Ruth and Boaz, I want my Boaz and so on. But nobody realizes that Ruth had to get married first so she could link with Naomi, so Naomi could lead her to Bethlehem so she could find her Boaz. So would you say Naomi's son was not the one? Would you say that? Or would you say it was God's will for her to marry one of Naomi's son that could lead her to a greater purpose? So I feel like, like you said, Brandon, like God's will in your life will always be God's will. And sometimes that leads you to the person. And sometimes it's God, God's will, in my opinion, personal opinion, for you to live out your entire life with that person for the purpose that he has in store for you and that person. And sometimes God's will is not for you to be with just that one person. Sometimes that person leads you to a different situation that leads you to a different situation that leads you to your overall purpose, that leads you to having, to being a part of Jesus's lineage. You know what I mean? So that's my opinion on the whole idea of the one. I feel like it's God's will and God's will sometimes is, this person is who he needs in your life for this season. That's what I think. Amen. Amen. Um, I love all the points. I feel like you said the same thing over and over, but I do. I love all the points and I understand from everyone's perspectives. And I thank you guys so much for sharing your perspectives. Um, anything else to add to that before we wrap up? Even from the other questions, or if you had any other questions you wanted to ask, well, or before we wrap up, no other comments. Sure, go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, it's a question that I know lends itself to kind of being a tangent, but I just wanted to raise it for the sake of conversation. You know, it's every young person's, every Christian young person that I've spoken to, you know, longs for this idea of marriage and, you know, being with someone and, and all of that lovely stuff. I, for one, aspire to that. But then something that I don't think is equally as discussed is those of us who God is calling to a life of singleness and ministry, you know, the kind of Paul kind of life. And for some, that's scary. That's scary ter territory. But then when we talk about this idea of being submitted to the will of God, then that submission has to be a willingness to me. And even if God is calling me to a life of singleness, I'm willing to accept that. And that's a scary type of submission to me because all my life in my mind, I've been like, this is something that I long for. This is a desire of my heart. But then how submitted are we to the will of God that if God say, yo, I want you to pull a Paul, we're willing to do that. Thanks, Daniel. And that is why one of my favorite absolute Bible verse in the world is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not the way people talk about that Bible verse, but the way it comes down from the few verses up. It is the idea that even if God's will is for me to live in poverty, I can be content. Even if God's will is for me to live in richness or abundance i can be content because i can do all things through christ who strengthens me it's the idea of being so so submitted to god's will and yes it hard nobody wants to suffer nobody wants to sleep on the floor nobody wants in a prison like peter and paul nobody but it's the idea of being so submitted to god that you're able to find content in, in, in that. And just like you, Brandon, that idea scares me so much. The idea of not fulfilling um, 
even not having children, not being married, all of that, like that is a desire of my heart, you know, but having become a Christian, it's, it's not easy. I can say it's not easy, but it, it's a prayer that I continue to submit like, Lord, I pray that this is your will for my life. But Jesus gets said with it, seven, eh, the, word, the, the place, the prayer is take this cup from me. But at the end of the day, let your will be done. So it's it not easy, but that is my <laughs> daily prayer. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Vicky, for that. Thanks, Brandon, for that as well. Amen. All right, guys. Well, it seems like we're at the end now. Um, what a wonderful Bible study. So many questions, so many thoughts. Um, I loved hearing from each and every one. Thanks, everybody, for sharing. I know this will leave a lot of us pondering things in our hearts. I just pray that we just pray to God and ask him what direction we should go in according to his will. Um, so thanks again, everyone, for coming out. And thanks so much for sharing. Thanks for being here. Um, now we will close as we normally do, which is... Um, asking for some volunteers to pray and to sing a prayer chorus. So we would need one person to sing a prayer chorus for us and just one person to pray on this prayer request list for us. Yes, Hefe? Hefe? Are you guys volunteering to do something? Yeah, we will. We will sing the, the prayer chorus. chorus. Okay, all right. So just one person to pray over these prayer requests for us, please. One volunteer. We'll have someone that will be praying to us. Wow, thank you, Hefe Fellowship. All right, whenever you guys are. Who should we pray for? This, there's a, can you see it on this? Yeah. There is a, yes. The prayer request. Okay, so you can just All right, whenever you get. That's the prayer request over there. Okay, so we'll sing the prayer chorus and then the check it will. It's, oh. The prayer request has come off. We don't see it anymore. We're we'll sharing it. There was another, there was a change to it, so I was just going to reshare it shortly. It's going to be up soon. Brandon is just, um, doing, it'll be there. So you guys you can um, speak in the meantime. Yes, yeah, speak in the meantime, and it'll be up by the time you guys are ready. Only you are worthy. Only you are worthy. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. For there's no
that's free. <clears throat> Most righteous and eternal Father, the God, the great King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. O oh, great God, as we come to you this morning, mighty God, in this night for some of us, we just want to acknowledge you, mighty God. Just want to acknowledge your sovereignty, mighty God, over all the earth, mighty God. Mighty God, there is no one else like you today, mighty God. We can search all over, mighty God. We can look high and look low, mighty God, but no one can be compared unto you. Father God, as we come to you, mighty God, we just want to thank you for keeping us every day, mighty God. We just want to thank you for your grace and your mercies, which are renewed daily, mighty God. Father God, we want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who you sent to die for our sins, mighty God. Father God, we want to thank you for your protection over us, mighty God. And Lord, as I come to you, mighty God, I put these prayer requests before your hands, mighty God. Discipline my walk, stop fear, falling into the same sin, mighty God. Many of us struggle with this sin, mighty God, of always repeating the same thing over and over, mighty God. Some for days, some for years, some for weeks, mighty God. But mighty God, we come to you, mighty God, for we cannot overcome these things by ourselves mighty mm. god only through your your son jesus christ lord because many of these things mighty god are strongholds mighty god and right now we come against it in the name of jesus christ lord father god i pray for nikuzi's family mighty god i don't know what's happening to the mighty god but I pray your peace be over them, mighty God. I speak the name of Jesus over her family, mighty God. The name of Jesus is power and it's peace, mighty God. Hallelujah, Father God. I pray for her studies, mighty God. I pray that you will come through for her, mighty God. Maybe there are some things that she might not understand or some subjects that she might be struggling with, mighty God. But you are the ultimate teacher, Lord, and I ask that you will help her right now, mighty God. And I ask that you will just send persons in her way, mighty God, who may assist her to become better in certain areas, Lord. I pray for her life in China, mighty God. I pray, mighty God, that she'll keep close to you, mighty God. You know, China is very hard, mighty God. As we, Christianity is not so popular, mighty God. But you are here, mighty God, and I pray that you will um, send more Christians around her path, mighty God. And I pray that, so that we can pray for her strength, mighty God. I pray for her right now in Jesus' name. Oh God, and yes God, and may she walk in your purpose, Lord. You know, sometimes we struggle to walk in your purpose. Sometimes we want to do our own thing, mighty God, when you're calling us to do another thing, mighty God. For that's the human in us, mighty God. But always remind her that she has chosen to follow you, mighty God. You do not force her, mighty God. Father God, I pray that you will strengthen her right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Blessings, everyone. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, and Shaq. Well, tonight was truly a blessing tonight this morning really met higher than my expectations thank you guys so much for coming out and sharing your thoughts and asking your questions and for being respectful when doing so um next week i'm inviting you guys to our regular programming of bible study where we will continue looking at the book of john and yeah until then Stay safe, guys. Thank you again so much for coming out. I love you guys so so, so much, and take care of yourselves. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.